probably on some subconscious level that I didn't realize at the time, I think I probably chose a career that as painful as it can sometimes be, I chose a career that inherently forces me to be present. You, you really can't be a good actor if you're not present at least a portion of the time. If you've got something, let it rip. I'm never gonna do this again. Everybody grapples with this idea that you're really a fraud. Like I'm alive. And that's when it clicked with me. I thought these are not superheroes. These are just men that can do super things. Welcome back to Monday Morsels, the mini version of 10,000 No's. I'm Matthew Del Negro, and the following clip is raw and unscripted. It's a real world problem solving conversation with one of the members of our 10,000 No's insiders community. The, the biggest value I've found with him is really his underlying through line, I would say, is being present that there is nowhere else to be but right here the past is gone the future is in our imagination the only thing right in front of us is this like right now this is all we have um and then he talks about different activities how they people for example surfing people go and they surf because that it requires them to be in the present, forget about all their problems at home because they, they literally have to be in the present or they wipe out. And so then they're like, oh God, I had such a great time surfing, but really it's, they had a great time being present. And I think it's part of why I like this group. I think it's part of why I like acting. I think it's part of why I like interviewing people for the podcast because I'm forced to be right there with them. If, if I'm not, I'm not good at my job. Probably on some subconscious level that I didn't realize at the time, I think I probably chose a career that as painful as it can sometimes be, I chose a career that inherently forces me to be present. You, you really can't be a good actor if you're not present at least a portion of the time. I, I don't think. Um, nor can you be a good interviewer if you're not present at least a portion of the time. Um, so how, how I've used him uh, is to re just con constantly remind myself of that fact, because like you, I'm checking emails, I'm thinking about the future, worrying about the future, uh, thinking about the past, what did I do or not do that I could have done better? Um, you know, looking at social media, oh, what, comparing myself to others, all of it, just like every one of us, I think. Um, I think when I'm in better flow is when I'm closer to what he's talking about. I find myself listening to podcasts on a run um, or working out or whatever, and I'll love it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, where was I? And I, I have to do the back, you know, 15 seconds back, 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 back. And sometimes it's like, two minutes back and I realize, oh, something was said that launched me into an entire conversation with myself, which is cool if, it, if it's prompting me to look at my life and assess whatever I just heard, but then you literally miss two minutes and not even aware that you missed it. I'll go back. I mean, it's funny because when you have a podcast, you can see where people listen, where people drop off or whatever. I'm probably like the only person that actually listens to the entire thing and, and actually goes back and listens to the parts that I feel like I missed. Um, it, it, and that is, I guess, an example of, of 
not being present, like I'm present, 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 and then all of a sudden I'm in my own thoughts. And it's kind of, Aaron, what you're talking about with reading it, you're into it, and then you just, you're, you just eject. And I think the beauty of, of Eckhart Tolle is he really is fully into that line of thinking for better and for worse. So I think the way I treat him and the way I'd suggest it with you guys, it's like, when you need it, listen to it. When it's working, stay with it. And when it's not, you go away. It's like taking a breather because it's a lot. And then when you feel like you need it again, go back in. You want to go listen to the beginning again or read the first five chapters? Great. You want to go on? Go on. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I feel like there are a lot of things. I, I think about the books that are on my bookshelf or the book that I wrote, which I wrote it with that. That was the whole, the way I wrote the book was just the kind of books that I like, which was you could read it all as one story all the way through, or you could read a section, you could skip to another chapter that looks like you need it now. You could read the whole book, like it, forget about it. Two years later, you're in a slump, and you're like, ah, I remember reading this book, 10,000 Knows. There was a thing about reframing. And you go back and you read it and you see the takeaways. And you, that's, I, I wrote it that way because those are the, that's the way I think I use books or YouTube channels or whatever, content in general. That's, that's my thought on it is like, I think that's his overall premise. And I wouldn't beat yourself up for not being able to read Eckhart Tolle 12 hours a day, seven days a week. He's, it's a lot, you know? All right, that is it. Now, obviously you can just take what was said and apply it to your own life, but if you like what you heard so much that you wanna find out how you can become a part of this community, just click the link for 10,000 Knows Insiders in the show notes or visit 10,000knows.com and check out more details there. If you feel like this helped you, please consider helping us by rating, reviewing, and subscribing to the podcast. Or if you're watching on YouTube, by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and dropping a comment below. We appreciate it and have a great week.